Today's video, we're gonna be working on this 2002 C5 Corvette Z06. So we're gonna get new rotors and pads on this thing. So I'm gonna show you guys how we're gonna get it done, what we're gonna get it done with. So first things first, the brakes are in dire need. You can see they are just standard rotors here. And this is kind of what you get with regular rotors. They end up rusting like that. And then on the rear, this car was primarily a track car. That's also what we're gonna use it for. But check out these rear rotors, huge cracks in the actual rotor everywhere. So we gotta get these things off. They're all heat cracked. I don't know if you guys can see that one there as well, but we're gonna go ahead, pop the wheels off. We gotta get this on the lift. Let me show you guys what we're putting on though. So we picked up this stuff from Bear Brakes. Really, really nice stuff, you guys. So you can see here that they're zinc coated. The nice part about this is they're not going to rust over here and on the edge, which is a really nice feature. And we got also bare brake pads to go with it. So we've got the fronts, we've got the rear. One interesting thing though, you'll see with the bare brakes, it shows you the vehicle front, vehicle rear, direction of rotation. So you can see here the left, meaning these are designed to rotate this way, which is uh, a lot of people would install them the opposite way, but there's a specific notice here in the box and packaging that shows us and tells us that we have to make sure we put this on the left. Otherwise it says it can actually damage our brakes. So let's go ahead, get this vehicle up in the air and get to work. We've got the car up in the air. So let's go ahead, pop the wheels off. That part's simple enough. And then we'll get right into the brake job. Okay, so we're gonna do the front first. So once you get your wheel off, you're gonna see this. And somebody's actually replaced these calipers. Uh, this car is new to us, so we're just kind of going through it. But you're going to basically need two sizes. It's pretty nice. So you're gonna need a 15 right there. So the bolt is a 15 that holds the caliper on. And then back here, this, you're gonna need a 18 millimeter. If this starts spinning on you, your slider pin. And then for here, you'll need a 21 and that is going to remove your caliper bracket. Also, once we get this off, we will retract our pistons. You can honestly, if you guys wanna save yourself some work, you can put a pry bar in here and force the caliper over so that it's effectively pushing in your pistons. So if you wanna do that, or I'll show you guys a cheap tool that you guys can rent or buy, I'll link it uh, for you guys here if you guys wanna grab the same tool and that will actually retract our pistons. It'll collapse them so that you can put in your new pads. So anyways, let's get a 15 on here and we'll take our caliper off and we'll go on to the next step. Okay, so here we go with our 15. Break these guys loose. And like I mentioned, if this starts spinning, which it more than likely will, you're gonna grab it here with a wrench. And then we will take these 15s out. And our lower bolt. Take our caliper off, so we'll slide it off the back. And then we will support it as well. Okay, so next up, you can choose to unload your pads if you want, just like so. Your clip might uh, take off like mine just did. Then we're gonna grab our 21. If you're just doing a simple pad job, you could already just put your pads back in, but since we're changing out the rotor, we've gotta take off this bracket to free our rotor. So we'll remove our 221s from our caliper bracket. And just be conscious that once you take these out, the rotor is gonna be able to be free, so be ready for the rotor. So with our two bolts removed, we can take off this bracket. Like I said, the rotor is gonna be free, so we can remove our rotor. And here we are on the back. So similar deal. So 15 here, this is actually a 16 and then 21 over here. So we're gonna go ahead, take out our 15s. We'll hold our pins from spinning with 16. And then once we get the caliper off, then we can go ahead and take off our 21s and the whole bracket will come off. So we'll crack these loose. So as you can see, that pin is spinning. We're gonna use a 16 to hold it. Here we go with our other 15. Same thing, our 16 to hold the pin. Remove our bolt. Now we can take the caliper off. Okay, caliper is off, so we'll secure it off to the side. Now we can go ahead and remove our 221s. All right, with both of those free, we can loosen them by hand. Again, make sure you're securing your rotor because it is gonna be free once you take out these two bolts. Also worth mentioning is make sure you don't have the parking brake or emergency brake set because otherwise you have a hard time getting the rotors off. Now we can go ahead and remove our rotor. All right, any of you guys that even know me in the slightest or have been following along on this channel for any length of time, you'll know that I'm a perfectionist, even if it 
has to be on a race car or track car. So um, it was bothering me that the brackets weren't red and somebody had obviously replaced the calipers at some point. Um, and so now I've got Duplicolor red caliper paint and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I just finished degreasing them. So now I'm gonna go ahead and get them painted red so that they match the actual caliper itself. All right, so there is a parking brake shoe system here that's on the inside of the rotor, but um, somebody has incorrectly installed these. So I'm not gonna be able to do that part of it with you guys. Um, you'll see here, this is just laying about. So um, yeah, I'll probably make a separate video for you guys on that, but you can see here, somebody has not put this clip in it and it essentially just disintegrated the shoe on this side because this wasn't held up. So you can see here the shoe's fully intact there. They didn't put the clip in, so this one just probably drags and they must have got fed up with it and disconnected it. So I'll have to order the appropriate stuff for there, but just want to point that out to you guys that if you see one of these dragging, it will keep your shoe, you know, hanging on the inside of the caliper on the drum side. So just point that out, but uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get these rotors and everything on here. All right, so here is the caliper bracket. We painted them all so that uh, they don't look as bad, honestly. But right now I've got the sliders, so I'm just cleaning them off. This is with the old grease on there, the slider pin grease. And then uh, I've got some new slider pin grease, so I'm cleaning them off. Make sure that your boots aren't torn, inspect all those. And then uh, we can slide them back into our caliper brackets and they'll be ready for the front and the back. And uh, this also here is the tool I was mentioning. I'll link it down below. Um, this comes with a million different attachments, but essentially you just need one that's gonna press on the piston. I'll show you guys how that works. Luckily, the rear parking brake isn't ratcheting, so you don't have to worry about turning it as you apply pressure. You just It's just a straight up uh, squeeze. You could use the C-clamp on, just a basic C-clamp on this setup as well, but whatever you guys wanna do, let me get this sorted out and then we'll get back to the vehicle. All right, so here we go with the rotors, you guys. If you're putting on regular rotors that are covered in oil, definitely want to degrease them and uh, use a bunch of brake clean to get that oily surface removed. So our brake rotor is on, that is hanging. Now we can put our bracket on and then uh, we'll go to the next step. All right, so here is our bracket. We've got our two bolts. So we'll slide this puppy over. Okay, we'll go ahead and tighten our two bolts to hold the bracket on. Okay, next up, some kits do or don't come with the hardware, or if you're gonna reuse the old ones, clean them up with a wire brush. And we'll go ahead and we'll install these here on the bottom and the top before we load in our pads. Okay, so here's our front pads. You're gonna notice this squealer tab. You're gonna put that on the inside. So just go ahead and put the squealer tab on the inside brake pad. So there we go. Pad is installed, squealer tab is on the inside. Same deal here. Okay, so our pads are there. Now we can move our caliper over and the, our front calipers are two piston. So we're gonna have to use a tool to push both pistons back in with the new set of pads. So let me show you that process. So we're gonna take this tool here and you'll have to adjust it based on where your pistons are at. And it's not gonna take much effort. Some break or a little bit more, but I'm finding that these Corvette ones are pretty easy, honestly. So you're gonna hold your caliper. You might have to use a uh, wrench or something here, but these ones, like I said, they go in super, super easy. So just like that, it didn't really take much at all. So now we'll loosen off our tool. I'll we'll move over to our other piston. So you can see this tool kind of has like a shape of a brake pad, so that fits into that portion there. We'll have to adjust it. We'll have to adjust it a bit to fit back in here. And if you have a dual piston set up like this, you might have the other piston kind of fight you. So it just depends. These ones are so easy. I bet you I can almost do it with my hand. And I can. I can actually move it with my hand. So you might have to squeeze both of them at the same time, you guys because when you press on one, the other one might pop out. So just keep that in mind, but that's how you retract your pistons. All right, so once you retract your pistons, you're ready to install this. Keep in mind your brake line orientation. Make sure you don't get it twisted up. Otherwise it can get into the wheel and cause all sorts of issues, which I'm sure you can understand. So now we're gonna go ahead and slide our caliper over the top. Make sure that your slider pins get behind. If you find like, you know, it's, your caliper's not tucking in, just reach in and feel where your slider pins are at. You might have to push them in. So there we go, we're fully seated. There is a spring on the back here, uh, spring steel. 
Some brake kits will come with a replacement one, um, so you can choose to replace it, or if yours is in okay condition, however you wanna manage that. But now we're ready for our two bolts right there. So there's my two 15 head bolts. And the bottom one, and again, you might have to press in on your caliper. And this vehicle is, like I think I mentioned, it's new to me, so I'm definitely gonna be doing some cleaning under here. She's definitely seen cleaner days. So anyways, all right, so 15 here, and then like I mentioned to you guys before, this is an 18, so let me tighten these two, and then uh, we're done on the front here. All right, so double check that all your hardware is tight, and now we're ready to go to the rear. All right, so we're gonna grab our rotor. We'll hang it. Now we can get our caliper bracket and we'll put it in with our 221 mil bolts. We got our pads. Again, squealer tab goes on the inside. Some people choose to put grease on here. Honestly, you guys, I am not one of those people because um, I find that this grease is just gonna get all over your rotor and it's gonna contaminate your rotor, but Again, you guys can choose to do that. Some people also put the grease on the back of the pad, but a lot of uh, premium pads, they have this uh, on the back of the pad, which actually helps with all that. But again, I'm not gonna tell you guys what to do. If you guys are prefer a certain method on lubrication, have at it, but I am not one of those and I've never had any issues or squealing. Back pad is in, front pad is in, square up our rotor. Now we can hang our caliper. So same deal, we're gonna have to retract the piston. So we'll have to adjust this smaller. So that slides in here. And then we're gonna extend it. All right, so now that our piston's retracted, go ahead and slide this on. You might have to push your slider pins a little bit so that you can get the caliper on. Install our two 15 mil bolts. All right, then we'll tighten down our two 15s and uh, double check all your work, make sure all your hardware is tight. Again, same thing with the brake line, make sure you didn't twist it up when you had it off and uh, we should be good to go here. All right, you guys, so the car is back down on the ground and it looks so much better. So I did paint the wheels at the same time because uh, the previous owner had spray painted them red and very poorly at that. So um, I'm gonna get these powder coated and we're probably gonna end up changing the wheels out at some point, but it looks so much better. So when the brakes are on, make sure you uh, tighten your wheels, of course, and also very important, you guys, make sure that you pump the brake pedal because you have to move your pistons on your calipers back in. So make sure you pump the brakes as well. Wouldn't be a bad idea to also bleed the brakes at the same time, but uh, I'll leave that up to you guys. So anyways, there is that as well. It looks so good with these bare brakes in here gonna be a wrap for this video you guys if you guys enjoyed it make sure you give it a thumbs up for me i will link down below the parts that we used in this video and if you are into corvettes make sure you hit the subscribe button and check out the other videos on the channel we're doing lots to this car so we just finished the brakes we're also going to be doing a hearst shifter a hooker blackheart exhaust system all sorts of parts for this thing so we're going to be hooking it up with a bunch of goodies we also already did a race seat in it so check out those videos as well and see you guys on the next one